Hello everyone and welcome back to Open. The Acro Circulo is celebrating its 30th anniversary with La Monja Alferez. I think I said that right. Alferez or Alferez. We're going to learn more about that when we introduce you to our guests. But the story itself is about a 17th century woman who fights against all odds to validate their gender identity. Um, with growing attacks on transgender people, La Monja Alferez, a 17th century play centered on a non-binary character demonstrates that gender nonconformity is neither new nor unnatural, and the challenges gender nonconforming individuals faced are still present then and now. And joining us to share more is founding artistic director and producer of Teatro Circulo, Jose Cheo Oliveras, and actress of La Monja Alferez, Alba Gumusio. Hello and welcome. Hola, Rina. How are you? Good to have you back. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here, Chill. All right, so I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right because I know there's an accent on the E. Alferez. Yeah. Alferez. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I said it right. Well, congratulations on your 30th anniversary. Yep. Let me, let, should I make a disclaimer? I founded this company when I was six, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're celebrating, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. We are excited. Uh, I mean, it's easier said than done, right? But it's been 30 years of producing classical, contemporary, and having a lot of programming for seniors, for young people, and getting our own building, renovating the building. I mean, a long history of, of uh, you know cultural uh, activities in the Lower East Side, and we are very proud of that. I know, and you should. It's a it's a, a beautiful theater, a beautiful building. I've rehearsed there on numerous occasions. I've visited many a shows. I know you're renovating right now, which mm -hmm. is why you're kind of traveling into other theaters. But the fact that you've been able to sustain right there on Fourth Street, um, which is like its own theater row, right. and even through the pandemic, it, it's really you know it's. It's to be admired, and, and we acknowledge you, and we thank you for making sure that our theater is still present. Absolutely. And when I say our theater, I mean the a theater with la, Latine flavor, um, be it in Spanish or English. I know this particular play is in Spanish with English subtitles. <laughs> 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 it's a good thing. It's a good thing, though, because that's how we learn our Spanish. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we have been. We have been. Uh, it's been a journey, and uh, the um, important thing is to stay with our mission. We actually decided thirty years ago that we were going to be doing uh, a theater in Spanish, because there is what. Uh, 30% of the population in the city are Latinos, and, right. and we we decided that we were going to stick with the language. And then we, for accessibility issues, we obviously offer the, sub, the subtitles. Uh, but we also do some plays in English occasionally. I mean, it's important also to to show the, you know, different voices from the Latino diaspora in the city, which is, yes. Yes. Which is huge. Yes. And so, and those are the ones I've visited. That's why I made my little... <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, you know, we just recently had you on not too long ago, um, but that, Trujillo, yeah. yeah, for Trujillo, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, that was in Spanish too. Yes. And it wasn't that challenging for me to read the subtitles and still get the gist of. I mean, I speak Spanish, but when you're doing it like in full force like that, <laughs> and you get caught up in the emotions. It's like, oh my gosh, what, what was that? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> so. That's the other thing is, you know, uh, the quality of the productions are are really uh, time traveling, right? Yes. That was a time tra traveler. So I'm assuming this one is definitely going to be a time traveler. So talk to us about this. Why you chose this too? Well, I mean, uh, we decided for this year that we wanted to really uh, curate a season that had to do with very, very current issues. Mm -hmm. And obviously, mm -hmm. as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, the situation with uh, the transgender community in the in, in the states, I mean, in the in the country, right. it's is terrible, and we needed to open a forum uh, for discussion. Isn't it crazy that this play was written in the 17th century? No, when I read that, uh, I was like, wow. Yeah, either either Alarcón was too ahead of his time, or we're too behind. I mean, it's 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 crazy uh, that uh, this play was written in the 17th century in the time of the Inquisition and and then and then playwrights like Alarcón, a Mexican playwright, 
you know, was along with Sor Juana, you know, contemporary of Sor Juana, they were, you know, ahead of their time, you know, telling people uh, there's a, there's space for everyone, right? Right, right. That's beautiful. And and just in case you guys, uh, you, you need the translation. Uh, the actual the translation of uh, La Monja Alferez is the Lieutenant Nun. And and I I, I want to assume, but I don't know. Sandra, are you playing this main character? Uh -huh. No, no. I'm playing uh, Lady Ana, Doña Ana. Uh, La Monja Alferez is played by Maria Fontanals. Uh -huh. uh, she couldn't be with us okay. today. Uh, but uh, I'm playing, um, I'm her, uh, his girlfriend. Right, the, the love interest. The love right? interest, his, yeah. His girlfriend. Is that how it's, he's, he's referred yeah. to as a his, not yeah. a they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, a, yeah, just because fine, we're yeah. living in this, <laughs> in this world of pronouns, so yeah. I'm just curious to know what kind of language is being used, you know? Yeah. It's amazing, exactly that. I mean, mm -hmm. this, this character is, is a woman who identified as... And it's a real story. This yeah, is not a fictional story. Mm -hmm. It's Catalina de Rauso is a historical character who decided that she wanted to live her life as a man. Mm -hmm. She dresses as a man, goes to the military, becomes a famous soldier, and lives his life as a man. Right. And it's, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, and no question about his identity from, from you know, the beginning of the play. And, and, and uh, is all this in disguise, you know, like, or it's just... I guess I'm trying to, to grasp, right? We're talking 17th century, yeah. right? So how could this person even make it into the, the military without having their, you know, genitalia, yeah. you know, and, checked? And, um, and, and, and so it, it, it's like really questionable about how much does it really matter if you're doing a good job, right? Because that's what the story is. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, uh, you know, in the theater, it's a little bit easier because in the in the theater, everything is a uh, it's a convention, right? right? So, in 17th century theater, for example, it was enough for you to dress as a man; the audience will buy that's a male character, right. or to dress as a woman, the audience will buy that that's a, a, a female character. Right? Are we referring to Shakespeare? <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. so in in this case, I, I assume that that Catalina probably you know had a. Uh, appearance, you know, uh, you know uh, that passes as a man, yeah, you know, yeah, right, and, right, and, right. And, and because mm -hmm. she did it all her life, right, and yeah. she only was discovered when she declared. Mm -hmm. Ah, that so, she to be yeah. discovered. So, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that that she, you know, was accused by someone else. Uh, because no, she like she, fraud. She, it yeah. wasn't like she was yeah. found out. Correct. Is what you're saying. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you see the portraits of uh, in my I call him uh, Guzman because to me it's Guzman. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a man. It's so it's not. Okay. What really has like, this process been for you? Like, what's it been like for you um, as a woman being with a woman um, and not even a woman, right? A woman who transformed into becoming a man. Well, first when I when I read the script, I thought it, I, I I have to read like. Two more times, like this story is so amazing and it's true and it happened. And then to me, uh, being to me, it's about love because right. I'm I'm in love with right. this person, right? And I don't I don't mind. Right. Uh, right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me because he's so uh, brave and has everything is perfect to me. So to me, and then uh, working mm -hmm. with uh, another women and is. I mean, we are like understanding our characters right. and trying to be truthful with the with the story. Right, the exchange. Right. Yeah. And, and so, what, what do you hope that people walk away with in, in mounting this production, too? Uh, well, I, I, as I said before, I hope that people uh, realize, that even if even if it's a little bit, that there's space for everyone. Right. Yeah, this is no, this no, is. No, we people. are human beings. We are yeah. not. Uh, Blacks, white, women, gays, men, whatever. You know, we are human beings. And hopefully, uh, I'm not talking about not even tolerance. I'm talking about acceptance, right? right? That, mm -hmm. that, that, that people accept other people right. uh, as human beings. As they and, are. And, yeah, and exactly. as they are not. Exactly. Right? Both. Right? So this isn't like an LGBTQIA, uh, you know, let's keep adding letters, 
production, it definitely welcomes it, but it isn't solely for that because that within itself is its own um, isolation, right? Because it's like you're giving everything uh, some kind of definition and versus like, you know what? Look, this is a story that existed um, from the 17th century, which is really proof that it's been around for a long time and now it's just a matter of, of just talking about it in a normalizing manner. Yeah, and, and if I can, uh, Rina, I would like to add that as part of our celebration, we uh, also put together an academic conference around this play mm -hmm. and we are inviting 14 uh, scholars and golden age specialists that are coming to our theater uh, next week uh, for this conference and we are going to uh, present all the research uh, about the play, about the playwright. Uh, and these, these uh, professors are coming from Spain, from Canada, Chile, Puerto Rico, the United States. So it's, 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 it's another, another layer uh, to offer, you know, and educate people about, about the work. Yeah, beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. And they can find that on the website? On the website, and it's, it's a free event. It's going to be from 10, 10 a.m. till so 6 o'clock. It's on ne ne next Friday on uh, November 10th. November 10th. Yes. Well, we thank you for bringing this here with us. Once again, thank you again to Jose Chero Oliveras, founding artistic director of Teatro Circulo and producer of La Monja Alferez, along with actress Sandra Gumucio. Once again, performances of La Monja Alferez kicks off today, November 3rd, and will run until November 19th at the Chain Theater, located at 312 West on 36th Street on the third floor. And for more information, you can visit teatrocirculo.org. Stay tuned. Our Open Artist Spotlight is coming up next.